Then shall they fast. So it's repeated three times to show the importance of the subject of fasting. Then shall they fast in those days. Then shall they fast in those days. So to be ruled by our belly is to be ruined by our belly. Some people have said to them, their belly is their God. Well, if I don't eat by 7 a.m., the day is lost. That's the way, that's my makeup. 8 a.m. latest, I must have a breakfast. Then I have um, a brunch at 11. The day I don't have it, I'm destabilized. Then I have proper lunch at 2 o'clock. And then pre-dinner at 4. What a worship. What a worship. It's unless there be any profane person like Esau who sold his birthright for a morsel of meat. For ye know how he sought it carefully with tears but found no place for repentance. Oh, poor Esau. Now, there are many poor believers. One thing they won't take is fasting. I heard someone say recently and I got scared. He said God only prescribed one day fasting in a year. Amen. But I saw Moses fasted 40 days twice on a roll. He broke the table, he went back. Making 80 days. I saw Nehemiah fasted three weeks. I saw Daniel live a fasted life. Pleasure is an enemy of destiny. Pleasure is an enemy of destiny. Woe unto them that has ease in Zion. They are in Zion, the city of deliverance, where you possess your possession. But they love ease above responsibilities. And so, their life does not reflect that they belong to Zion. Proverbs 21 verse 17 He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. You can perfect your life by undue crave for pleasure. Undue, for, for pleasure. Undue crave for pleasure. One of my friends in those days said, he looked at me in Kaduna and said, would this man kill himself? Paul said, I die daily. You can't impart on generation just eating chocolate, sweet, cake, bring Coke, bring Fanta, mix them together, bring wine, just 1% alcohol. <laughs> it's coming gradually. So it's going to become 10 percent and then 20 and then full scale alcohol. <laughs> Amen. Paul fasted often. Second, Chron Second Corinthians 6 5 and Second Corinthians 11 27. In fastings often. And so Jesus said, Paul said, that's the gospel. Yes, sir. Jesus said, Paul said, no one can preach in this world a 30 minutes message without Paul said. Otherwise, it's not the gospel. 
Jesus showed us the principles. Paul showed us the mysteries. Amen. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ, your glorious birthright in Christ will not be sold to your belly. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So fasting is not a religious punishment. It's a spiritual platform that establishes profitable, triumphant Christian living. You will not miss it. In the name of Jesus. What are the profits or benefits in fasting? The Bible says we should be ready to give an answer to anyone that asks the reason for the hope that is in us. We, we must have a ready answer. Why fast? What is in it for me? First Peter chapter 3 verse 15. What is in fasting for me? Because when you come to understand the purpose, you won't need to be pushed. It becomes a natural delight. A natural delight. A natural delight. So we run through nine of them very fast and then get strengthened from the communion table for the 21 days journey ahead of us. Number one, fasting is for empowerment into next levels. Empowerment into next levels. Fasting is essentially about the empowerment of the saint. But it's important to know Empowerment is in levels. The apostles received the Holy Ghost. And so, according to scriptures in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, they received power. Now, in chapter 4 of Acts, with great power. Amen. Now, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. Luke 4 14 and then the people saw the mighty power of God in Luke 9 43 from power to mighty power the apostles from power to great power amen these are all indicators that power is in levels and so when we engage in a fast, it's in our crave to see the next level of power. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee to see thy power and thy glory as I've seen thee in the sanctuary. So fasting is about next level of empowerment, which enhances your level of spiritual authority. Can I hear your amen? Changes your level of command. I was in the first 1977 and upon the conclusion of that fast, God came down and said, Behold, I've touched your tongue with a coal of fire. And from henceforth, as you see it, you see it. It's about empowerment. I wasn't fasting for bread and water. I was fasting for change of level in my spiritual life. Because Jesus returned with power, you are returning from these 21 days of prayer and fasting with next level of empowerment. Yeah. The Holy Ghost came upon Jesus in Luke chapter 4 when he was being baptized. This is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. That's okay. In chapter 9, this is my beloved son, in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. Change of level of spiritual authority. He gave them power and authority against unclean spirits. Power is always accompanied with authority. You say to this go, it will go. After this fasting. 
what you need to say to go twice before you say it only once. Amen. Amen. What you used to say once to go before when they sight you, they go. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Some people were baptized in the Holy Ghost and right now they too know that their tongue is not communicating. They speak in tongue but they know they are not communicating. The tongue is dry. Why? The oil is finished. The oil is finished. <laughs> in the course of this 21 days of prayer and fasting your oil shall be refilled yeah. in the name of Jesus Christ. A very graphic illustration is in Ezekiel 47 and verse 1 to 5. Um, and we are told here, Afterward he brought me again unto the door of the house, and behold, waters issued out from under the threshold of the house eastward, for the forefront of the house stood towards the east, and the waters came down from the, under the right side of the house at the south side of the altar. He's describing the release of the Holy Ghost from the right side of the throne where Christ is seated. Remember, if I go, I will send him to you. It's expedient for me that I go away. If I go not away, the comforter will not come. But when I go, I will send him. So it was being sent from where he sat. And the water is flowing. And then the man that had the line came up and measured a thousand of cubits and he took me through the water. It was to the ankle. Measured another thousand line, uh, cubits and it was to the knees. Another thousand uh, cubits and it was to the loins. Then another thousand cubits. Then it was a water, that, a river that I could not pass over. So he's talking about the rivers of living water, about the Holy Ghost flowing from the right side of the throne. And people operate in levels in that school of the Spirit. Can I hear your amen? amen. May everyone's ankle deep level move to knee level this time. Amen. May everyone at the knee level move to the loins level. And may we receive grace to move up the loins level to the level of rivers that cannot be passed over. Yeah. We shall be there. Yeah. Please keep panting. That to speak in tongues does not mean the end of empowerment. It's your registration in the school of power. Being baptized in the Holy Ghost is your registration in the school of power. You now start from 100 level. You move to 200 level. From 200 level to 300 level. 300 level to 400 level. And then if you are running a five-year program, 500 level, <laughs> you go for your master's, 600 level. And then you move to the next class there, 700 level. And then you decide to come for PhD, you start going, 900 level. <laughs> I mean, it's in levels, and it's unending. Praise God. It's in levels. Many of us have stayed around the same corner for too long. It's in levels. It's in levels. Your level must change this time. So fasting is for your personal empowerment. For triumphant living and fulfillment of your glorious destiny in redemption. You are fasting for nobody. You are fasting for yourself. Go to them that sell and buy for yourself. You are buying for yourself. I can't be praying for the church. You are buying for yourself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Prayer and finance does not really change things. It changes people. Yes, sir. It's changing you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's changing you. Yes, sir. It's changing, it's changing you. So have that personal, have that understanding of personal benefit that you draw from me. Serious personal benefit. Serious. Serious personal benefit. Okay, as you say it, you see it. Now, am I only saying it for two people? I'm saying it to myself. Relax. Peace be still. Relax. And then the plane stabilized. Praise God. It's absolutely for your personal benefit. 
So enjoy it. When students go to school and see they are benefiting their parents, they don't do well. I'm going to show him. I'm not going to any class. <laughs> A time comes in your life that when you are hungry, you can't tell your parents. You feel ashamed. So you keep the hunger. Keep it. Are you okay? Yes. <laughs> when the time you say responsibility, you didn't take it. When you think you are going to school to help your parents, you won't do well. When you see it as a personal opportunity to secure your future, yes. Abba, you were wrong. You were wrong. You know, those people who go about looking for prophecies, they are people who don't know how to reach God. Excuse me, what is God saying? Send it down. You'll be a policeman. <laughs> you, you'll be immigration. <laughs> you, civil defense. Somebody's story is changing. Amen. Now, Billy Graham said, some temptations come to all men, but all temptations come to the idol. Oh, how many? Oh. Oh. Somebody directed me to you that you see vision from the Lord. In our church, we don't see vision. They just say, look at the Bible. <laughs> so, what do you see? He said, Mm. Lay down. <laughs> you went to your village? When did you come back? You greeted one woman, Abby, and start creating the woman. Is <laughs> light complexion. He followed you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All those junk, junk, junk junk because you don't know God. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Yes. Your story has changed. Yes. Number two, benefit of fasting is the destruction of yokes. Now, chapter 58 of Isaiah verse 6, is this not the fast that I have chosen? To lose the bands of wickedness. To undo the heavy burden. To let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. So fasting is a platform for breaking every yoke. A yoke means something choking you. So whatever may choke in any aspect of your life, these 21 days of prayer and fasting will destroy it forever. Yeah. Whatever is choking your family life, you live under pressure perpetually, it will be destroyed forever. Yeah. Whatever may be choking your business and your career will be destroyed forever. Yeah. Whatever may be choking your marital destiny that kept you on the same spot for years, will be destroyed forever. Yeah. So fasting is ordained for destruction of yokes. He said, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Isaiah chapter 10 and verse 27 is ordained for destruction of yokes. Somebody was 25 years in drug addiction, cocaine, heroin, we had the testimony in the first service, walked into the prayer and fasting time of 2017, Jesus delivered them clean from that day forward. He said, I don't feed the urge anymore for drugs. I just appear in church every morning. That's a massive turnaround. Now, whatever is choking anybody's destiny shall be gone like a dream of the night. <laughs> Let me hear your loud and say, man. <laughs> Number three benefit of prayer and fasting is access to outbreak of revelation. Access to outbreak of revelation. Next to salvation, our greatest asset in the kingdom is revelation. 
Salvation rescues us from destruction. And revelation rescues us from frustration and devastation. It's the same thing. Many may be saved as passing through fire. But there is no value of redemption traceable in their life. Because of spiritual ignorance, lack of access to light. And it's a battle, it's a warfare. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. In whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, which is the image of God, should shine unto them. So there's a, a satanic interference, resistance to your access and my access to revelation. And some kind of this resistance will never go except by prayer and fasting. Now, let me tell you this. Every believer will be limited in access to revelation without engaging in the covenant obligation of prayer and fasting. You'll be limited. There's an outbreak of revelation. Out, outbreak of revelation. Amen. I walked out of any tendency for borrowing from the prayer and fasting altar. I wasn't praying for you. For the Lord that God bless us has promised you and you shall lend to many nations. During the pandemic, we were a blessing to 14 nations. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. But thou shalt not borrow. And I said, why, Jesus? Because a borrower is servant to the lender. Why, Jesus? You cannot serve two masters. You have to choose one and despise the other. October 4, 1981. We've never taken overdraft from any bank on dive. No. Outbreak of revelation. Then he said to me, you don't need to know anybody to scale the utmost height in life. Just know me. Those who do know their God, they shall be strong. So I don't need connections. Hallelujah. I've never sought one. Hallelujah. Connection with who? Hallelujah. And for what? Those who do know their God, they shall be strong. He said, my son, you need to know anyone to scale the utmost height in life. You know, in our country here, it's a common saying, it's who you know that matters. It's a devil's lie. Amen. Paul said, I know no man after the flesh. Mm. That's where he brought me to. In the fast. Mm. In the fast. Yes, then he came down in Proverbs 4 and verse 18. Your path is ordained as a shining light to shine more and more to a perfect day. I don't have ups and down agenda for you. It was in the fast. The same October 4. It was 1 to 4. Straight fight. Fast. Outbreak of revelation that, that decorates destinies. That decorates just outbreak. Now, before this 21 days is over, there shall be diverse outbreak of revelations in your life. Amen. Amen. Outbreak. We were in the fast. And the Lord said to me, from Psalm 34, verse 5, they don't look like it. My son, you have two eyes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? And I said, anytime you are looking unto man, never claim to be looking unto me. But if you fix your eyes on me, you will never be ashamed. You know, we have a lot of funny, funny projects in this ministry. Me and my wife have never sat down once to discuss a project. That with this number of churches we are building, what do you think? No. She's not thinking, I'm not thinking. The owner is thinking. Yes. We have to keep using what he gave us to use. Life. Outbreak of revelation that restores dignity. You will encounter many this time. Amen. So don't just fast and be praying and forget the prayer point you are praying. Oh, Father. Oh, Son. It's just two, my God. <laughs> Amen. 
Glory to God. In those days on the prayer mountain, it's not this prayer, five minutes prayer that is here. Shall we pray? Uh, shall we sit down? Hello? We meet at this point in two hours' time. Go ahead. You generate your prayer point. You pray your prayer point. If you sleep, that's your problem. <laughs> if you sleep in the night and something bites you. <laughs> Amen. But you are going to make the most of this. If all you do is come for prayer meeting at six, you are wasting time. You have a lot of things that you want to see God reorder. Take them up as projects. Glory to God. Outbreak of revelations. Outbreak of revelations. Everything God told me about church growth is outbreak of revelation. Outbreak. And keep the grass green because it makes me to lie down on green pasture. Keep sowing the seed. The seed is the word of God. And as the grass grows, <laughs> the sheep will come for it. And keep the grass green. Go out there, my friend, and tell them to come and see what I'm doing in church. Go again and again and again until my house is filled. I have been going again and again ever since. You will encounter God this time. Amen. Can I pray this prayer for you that nothing will distract your attention in this 21 day? Yeah. It will be your best spiritual season till date. Yeah. You will hear direct answers from God to every of your prayers. Yeah. Give the Lord a big clap offering. <laughs> there shall thy light break forth as the morning. Isaiah 58 and verse 8. And verse 10. Your light shall break forth out of obscurity. And your darkness shall be as noonday. All from the altar of prayer and fasting. Amen. It's your turn. Well, number four benefit. Speedy restoration of our health and vitality. And verse 8 of Isaiah 58, then shall your health spring forth speedily. Your health shall spring forth speedily. Every issue on your health will be gone like a dream of the night. Somebody is marching out of sickness and disease to live a super healthy life the remaining years of his life. Amen. If you are that individual, let me hear your loudest amen. amen. How does this happen? Most sickness that Jesus healed, they were oppressions of the devil. He went about doing good and healing all them that were oppressed of the devil because God was with them. And some of these Oppressors will not give way without prayer and fasting. Praise God. Amen. He said, why could we not cast this devil out? He said, because of your own belief. How be it? This kind went not out but by prayer and by fasting. And when the root is removed, is automatic. The plague will cease. Then Satan went forth and smote Job with boys. So boys look so ordinary and you know it's inflammation of uh, the uh, veins. <laughs> it was Satan inflammation. <laughs> Satan Smote Job with boys. Peter's mother-in-law was taken by a fever. Jesus rebuked the fever. There was a demon behind it. Can I hear your amen? amen. Sir, none of those things will have medical. They won't have medical solution forever. Satanic oppression has no medical solution. You can go from country to country, nation to nation, and to make a difference. Yes, there are physiological issues, you know, that come away, but there are direct satanic attacks on your health. 
You just sit down and then everything is just turning your body. And they check you, they say it's pneumonia. Mm. It's a tanya. <laughs> it's a tanya. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. And fasting and prayer will always rout any demonic installation against your health and set you free like a dream of the night. Amen. Now the good news is every satanic oppression on your life will be turned to a testimony. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Every satanic oppression on your life shall be turned to a testimony this season. Amen. That also ties to outbreak of revelation, you know, like we saw in that story of that terminal disease case in Job 33 and verse um, 21 to 25, his flesh was consumed a way that he could not be seen. And his bones that were not seen stick out. Yea, his life draws near to the grave and his soul to the destroyer. But if there be a messenger with him, one among the thousand, who will show to man his rights to healing, health, and wholeness. Then we go be merciful to him and say, deliver him from going down to the pit and find a ransom. Then his flesh shall return as that of a child and he shall return to the days of his youth. Not just healing, but rejuvenation. He returns back to the day of his youth. Whatever has robbed you of your strength will be fully restored this time. Amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Then, number five, Access to the next level of sanctification. How many want to please God here? How many desire to please God forever? Now, how many want to make heaven? Now, whatever disqualifies a man from making heaven needs attention. Needs what? It needs attention. He gave them power against unclean spirits. So there are unclean spirits in the atmosphere. Amen. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1, Mark chapter 6 verse 7. He gave them power against unclean spirits. Unclean spirits to cast them out. Unclean spirits. So there are spirits of defilement whose mission is to disconnect us from God and turn us to grand losers in the kingdom. And so we saw the case of Joshua the high priest. And Satan standing on his right hand to resist him. No. This garment, you can't put it off. No. And now Joshua was filled with, was clothed with filthy garment. And standing helpless. There are things you don't want to do you find yourself doing it. Now it must end this time. Yeah. And the Lord said, take off that garment from him. You will hear that kind of thing. Amen. The anger that puts your home under pressure will be over. Amen. The pride and arrogance that makes your home uncomfortable for you and your spouse will be over. Amen. Dirty words, killer words that come from your mouth that set your place on fire will be completely over. Amen. So there is a satanic interference in our desire to please God. And that's why we engage in fasting and prayer to clear them off our track. Amen. 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 He said, this kind went not out, but by prayer and fasting. There is no satanic installation that will resist the authority of faith coupled with prayer and fasting. So anything you don't want in your life, you'll never see it again. Amen. Anything you truly desire shall become your new testimony. Amen. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest. Amen. amen. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering, everybody.
For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the flesh, ye shall live. So as we grow in power, we begin to mortify, to destroy the deeds of the flesh so we can live. You live after the flesh, you die. But you allow the Holy Spirit to take over your life, you shall live because you destroy the deeds of the flesh. Thank you, Jesus. But ye are sanctified by the Spirit of the Lord. First Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 11. So it takes the empowerment of the Spirit to live a sanctified life and fastens a platform for empowerment into next levels. And such were some of you. <laughs> but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The Holy Ghost is the finest fire. In Malachi chapter 3. And it means you thoroughly purge us. So that our sacrifice can be acceptable to God. As in former days. Can I hear your amen? Yes. As you keep fanning the fire of the Holy Ghost in these 21 days. No chaff will remain in any area of your life. Yes. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yes. Next. Another benefit of prayer and fasting is express answers to prayers. Say with me, what? How many want to experience express answers to prayer? In Isaiah 58 and verse 9, Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and they will say, hey, here I am. Just take away from you whatever blocks your prayer channel. Let it be off your path. Then with speed, you receive answers. Elijah is a man like you. But the prayer that God answered, he prayed earnestly. Heartfelt, continued prayers. No casual prayers, no sleepy prayers. Fervent prayers. And we saw that kind of prayer in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41 to 46. Go and check, my friend. He said nothing. Go and check again seven times. He said, hey, excuse me, sir. I saw a cloud in form of a human hand. He said, tell him, get ready, rain is here. The prayer that won't go without a response from heaven. Be instant in prayer, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. No sleepy prayer. No prayer you pray. You can't even tell what subject you pray on. Father, thank you. What is that? <laughs> Display. Father, I thank you. I'm sure this 21 days will soon be over. <laughs> <laughs> the prayer that you pray that when you emerge from the prayer room, all the devils know you have met with God. That's the kind of prayer you will pray this time. Amen. Not absent-minded prayer. Not wandering prayers. No prayer with telephones in your front. Hello? I'm praying. You know we're in 21 days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> then another one calls you. I say, I'm praying. I'm praying. <laughs> Can you do that in court? You are in the witness box. <laughs> if I, it will be the worst mistake to let your phone be in your hand. To now say, excuse me, George, hold on. Hello? Court in the Moa. Glory to God. Focus prayer. Faith deliberate prayer. Prayer on a mission. Prayer 
with a determination to return with an answer. Fervent prayer, heartfelt prayer. That's the kind of prayer that enjoys speedy answers. You won't miss it this time. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Number seven, access to divine guidance. Access to divine guidance. Verse 11 of Isaiah 58. And the Lord shall guide thee continually. The Lord shall guide thee continually. And shall satisfy thy soul in drought. And make fat thy bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden. And like a spring of water. Whose waters fail not. That is the awesomeness of divine guidance. It gets you off the dresses of life. You become like a watered garden whose waters fail not. And they trusted not when he led them through the deserts. Isaiah 48 verse 21. He caused the rock to bring forth waters for them. Now, he clave the rock also and the waters gushed out. The Lord shall guide thee continually. You never suffer confusion anymore. You never miss your steps in life anymore. You never run your life on trial by error anymore. From now, specific directions, clear directives shall be your experience in your walk with God. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And let me hear your loudest amen. amen. That is what happens when you secure divine guidance. You emerge an ego believer. You are made to ride in your high places. You suck honey out of the rocks and oil out of the flinting rocks. When the Lord alone leads you, when you are not led by people's opinions, you are led by God. Every step of the way. Now, he goes before you. He goes with you. He walks with you. He walks through you. And he walks for you. So you become a wonder. You just become a living wonder. Well, in this 21 days of prayer and fasting, you never miss Heaven's direct, clean, and clear called direction for your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. amen. Very quickly, number eight, fasting facilitates access to realms of supernatural breakthroughs. Supernatural breakthroughs. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and um, Breakthroughs broke loose. The same chapter 4, verse 14, he returned the power. Verse 18, it became the focus of men. And down the way, we have never seen it in this fashion. It just was turned to a breakthrough entity. You are returning from these 21 days of prayer and fasting a breakthrough entity indeed. You never know breakdowns anymore in your life. Amen. You never know breakdowns anymore in your business. Amen. You never know breakdowns anymore in your career. Amen. You never know breakdowns anymore in your home. Amen. You never know breakdowns anymore in your head. Amen. You never know breakdowns anymore with your children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Isaiah 58 and verse 12. Concerning one of the results of prayer and fasting, he said, and they shall, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. That's talking about your children. Amen. Amen. All your children will be greater than you in all right respect. Amen. Now, and you shall be called, 
you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. And you shall be called the repairer of the bridge and the restorer of past to walking. That's talking about pace setting order of breakthroughs. You are raising the foundation of many generations. That generation will be gasping to catch up with what records you lay. Well, that will be part of your result this time. Yeah. Unusual things will break loose in your life. Yeah. As a seed of Abraham, the Bible said, um, by your seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You may look so ordinary there at that corner where you are, but God is making something outstanding out of your life. Yeah. All you need is settle down and obey God and watch him decorate your life. We saw the breakthrough of Paul the Apostle. We saw a secret and fast things of leading to outbreak of revelations and outbreak of exploits. Arise, shine, your light is come. Then who are these that fly as a cloud? You are hated and despised, but I'll make you an eternal excellency, the joy of many generations. Verse 22, a little one among you shall become like a thousand and a small one a strong nation. All coming from the altar of outbreak of revelations. In the name of Jesus, the next steps to take to your next level of breakthrough, you will receive it clearly this time. Yeah. And finally, fast and facilitate access to speedy delivery of our inheritance. Speedy delivery of our inheritance. Speedy delivery of our inheritance. How? From the outbreak of light. And we talk about the speed of light. I will hasten my war to perform it. Fasting provides a platform for outbreak of light. And light entitles you to outstanding speed of accomplishment. I will hasten my war to perform it. By reason of the light in which you are walking. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 11 and 12. What says thou? He said, I see a road of an almond tree. He said, Thou said the Lord. He said, I was saying, Well, if I will hasten my word to perform it, I will hasten my word to perform it. When you see well, you have provoked speed by saying well. The brighter your headlamp, in the night, the faster you can drive. The brighter you see, the greater speed you gain. Therefore, this year shall be a year of divine speed for you. Yeah. What will have taken you six years will be done in one year. Yeah. For some of us, this one year will be more than 20 years in worth. Yeah. By reason of divine speed. That shall be your experience. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. That shall be your experience. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Lift up your right hand and give God thanks. Give him thanks in words. You are in for the best of time this year. Give God thanks. Give him praise. Give him glory and give him honor. You are aimed for the best of time this year. It's a year you will much remember in your life. Everything will be falling into place with you. Your spiritual life is changing level. You are changing level in your business and career. You are changing level in your family life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering, everybody. Very quickly this afternoon, there are people here that need to turn their life over to Jesus and be saved. You want to become a child of God, you want your sins forgiven, I'd like to pray with you. Wherever you are in this service today, you want your sins forgiven, you want your name written in the book of life. You want to live an overcomer's life. I make heaven at the end of your journey. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet and I'll pray with you. God bless you. 
God bless you. You want to be saved today, please stand to your feet. You want your sins forgiven today, please stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you and remain standing, please. God bless you. I pray for you right there where you are. Wherever you are, please stand to your feet. I'd like to pray with you. And you'll be born again and become a child of God and live the overcomer's life and make heaven a grand style. God bless you. Now, there are also people here today that need to rededicate their life to Christ and start a new year in a brand new way. Not one step in and one step out. Not making God as one of your alternatives. But making him the only source of your expectation. Wherever you are, you want to rededicate your life to Jesus. Please stand and I'll pray with you. You want to have a most triumphant journey in the year 2021. Please stand to your feet. Jesus loves you. Amen. Now, for everyone standing both in the first and second call, please bow your heads for prayers. And lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Lift up your right hand to heaven. And pray this prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Say it loud. Forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again. That I may be justified. Right now. I believe that my sins are now forgiven. I'm washed by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm not a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. I will serve you all through the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Keep your hands up as I pray. Father, I pray over these precious souls. Your grace has brought them in. Let the same grace preserve them. I cover every one of you with the precious blood of Jesus. Stay covered the remaining days of your life in Jesus' precious name. You shall make this journey to the end. You shall not fail nor fall on the way. The grace that brought you in today will preserve you for life. You'll never walk away from Jesus anymore in Jesus' precious name. Congratulations, church. Give the Lord a big hand for them. Amen. Please complete your forms and Make sure you pass them over to those church officials that handed them over to you. We'll be glad to be part of your joy and help us of your faith. Give us that opportunity and we'll reach out to you. Shall we all rise? Everyone who has been blessed by the world, give the Lord a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen. How many are set by the grace of God to make the most of these 21 days of prayer and fasting? God will surprise you. Yeah. He said, when the Lord turned against our captive, you are like them that my God will surprise you. Yeah. Every of your desire will be delivered like a dream of the night. Yeah. My God will surprise you. Yeah. And the surprises begins from tomorrow. You will have great experiences on the prayer altar. Amen. You will make great discoveries from the word of life. Amen. You will enjoy outbreak of revelation. Amen. Speedy restoration of your health. Amen. You will enjoy divine speed. Amen. You will be met with divine favor. Amen. It will be clear that you have met with God. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Lift up your two hands and speak to the 21 days ahead of you. Speak to it right now from the depth of your heart. Express your desire. The kind of experience you want to, to have during this season. Thank you, Jesus. And blessed be your name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Can we have the stewards please come? We are partaking of this communion to receive divine strength 
that will sustain our fervency on the altar of prayer, intensity in our searching of scriptures, sensitivity to the voice of the Spirit, Try not to pray prayers like a wandering star. Concentrated and consecrated prayer. Prayer of amazing discoveries. And the angel of the Lord came to me a second time and I said, Arise. Take and drink, for the journey is long for thee. And then Elijah arose and did eat and drank. And he went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the month of God. First Kings chapter 19, verse 7 and 8. He could run in the strength of angels made for 40 days and 40 nights. From John chapter 6, we know that what we are taking is superior to what they took in the wilderness. Now, men did eat angels' bread. That's what they were eating on. Feeding on. But we're now eating the flesh and the body of Christ. Your strength will not diminish. Yeah. Your prayer life will remain on fire. Yeah. There shall be outbreak of light. Yeah. Your darkness will be as noon day. Yeah. Your light will break out of obscurity. Yeah. Your prayers will be answered with speed. You will receive very clean and clear call guidance. Yeah. You will never miss your steps anymore. Yeah. It will be the greatest experience of your life till day. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. And so shall it be. Yeah. So it's for yours. All run strength. Spirit, soul, and body. Your mind will never wander away for one second. We will hear from him. Yeah. It will be clear. Yeah. The proof will be all over you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Your health will spring forth speedily. Yeah. Your righteousness will go before you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Well, this is the flesh and the blood of Jesus and every table served here today is declared the flesh and the blood of Jesus as you partake of it enjoy the best of heaven in this forthcoming 21 days of prayer and fasting that starts tomorrow in the name of Jesus so shall it be be strengthened with might in your inner man. Yeah. Your days are declared renewed like the days of an eagle. Yeah. You shall not faint. Yeah. You shall not falter. Yeah. It shall be a most resourceful time for you in God's presence. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. Please get seated while the ushers direct as to your turn and then you partake of the table of the Lord.
you know, they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Lift up those two hands, everyone, and magnify him. Thank you. Thank you for your household. Thank you for members of your family. Thank you for the work of your hand. Give him glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. It's one thing to be a member of a church. It's another thing to be a follower. Members have their names on the list. But only followers are made. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you. We write the name of members on our register if we have. You are in service, you need to have your name registered there. But there is no value in membership. We only have value in followership. Follow me, Jesus said, and I will make you. Workers are paid, but followers are made. You are just entering your season of being made by God. Yeah. Then shall we know if we follow on to know the Lord. Every follower today will manifest the benefits of followership tomorrow. And followership is simply following what God says to do. In everything, give thanks. What? Everything. Then for all things, give thanks. In everything that don't seem to be working, give thanks. It's the only way to make them work. For things that are working, give thanks or they will stop working. <laughs> so we owe God thanks on all fronts. That's what I mean by followership. God says it, I believe it, and I go after it. That's what it means. In the name of Jesus, you never run Thanksgiving dry anymore. The sound of Thanksgiving will never depart from your heart and will never depart from your lips. In the name of Jesus. 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 With that charge, lift up your two hands and for everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. I thought I would have my children this year. Yes. God is still at work. Your children are on their way coming. You give thanks for being alive. Only those who are alive can have children. Then your children are here next year. Give thanks. I thought I would build my house this year, but you are not sleeping on the street. Give thanks. <laughs> I thought my sons and daughters would get married this year. Thank God they are still alive. They will get married. Give thanks. I thought I would get a new job this year. Give thanks that you are still working. Amen. But I lost my job. Give thanks that you lost your job. You are still alive to get another one. In everything, give thanks. For everything, give thanks.
Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Father, thank you again. And again. And again. Let today's visitation become a lifetime asset yeah. in everyone's life. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name. Yeah. It's my year of breaking limits. Give Jesus a big hand of praise and please, you may be seated. I think we can just go ahead and start dancing from what I said now. There is nothing more to do. <laughs> Amen. In everything, give thanks. First Timothy, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. And for everything, give thanks. Ephesians 5, and verse 20. So we are indebted to God in thanksgiving. Under all situations and circumstances, God said to me, if you lost anything, if you've lost anything, I'm the reason why you have not lost everything. So give thanks. Amen. <laughs> if you have lost anything, I'm the reason why you have not lost everything. You lost your job. That's okay. Did you lose your life? No. So you can get another job. Amen. <laughs> you lost your business. Oh, man. That, that's quite costly. But you haven't lost your life. He said, my enemy rejoices over me because when I fall, I will rise again. The righteous man falls seven times. You have only seen it once. Give thanks. <laughs> Amen. That's what it is. Praise God. It's one of the most powerful mysteries of the kingdom. Addiction to thanksgiving will make you a turnaround personality on the earth. God never stops working with thanksgivers. He never stops working for thanksgivers. You are going to see wonders. This morning across our various churches worldwide, we're looking at engaging the turnaround power of thanksgiving. The turnaround power of thanksgiving. How much turnaround power is in thanksgiving? <laughs> Jesus said, Father, I thank you for you hear me always. And I thank you because you have, not, you have heard me now even though Lazarus is smelling and stinking. Lazarus, I've given thanks. Come out. And he that was dead came forth. That's how much turnaround power is loaded in the mystery of thanksgiving. It's able to bring four day dead back to life. That's how much power is in the mystery of thanksgiving. <laughs> Mary said, <laughs> it's, take away, step by now he's thinking, he's been there for four days, he stop that. I hold the mystery in my hand. If you turn every stinking situation to an enviable testimony. Father, I thank you Lazarus, come forth. That's how much turnaround power is in Thanksgiving. That's why the devil pushes God's people to keep complaining and murmuring so as to complicate their matters further and mess up their situations. They that murmur in the wilderness were destroyed of the destroyer. First Corinthians 10 10. Murmuring is poisonous. Nobody must murmur again from here. More money is dangerous. It's a risk. Don't take it costly. They were destroyed for more money. They were not assisted. They were not helped. They were destroyed for more money. There are reasons notwithstanding. They were destroyed for more money. Today, by the unction upon my life, I decree an end to everything more money and complaining in you. 
is one of the fundamental protocols of the kingdom. You don't murmur to get at God's help. He turns his back on murmurers. <laughs> Amen. God gets angry with complainers. The people complained and God had it. And the anger of God was unleashed on them. Their reason for complaining notwithstanding. And now you find people complaining everywhere, every day. They don't know. They are turning God's help away from themselves. Therefore, today marks the end of every form of complainings and murmurings in your own life. It's over. I said it's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah. Now, listen. Every genuine thanksgiving usually resorts into praise, which brings God, God's presence down to us. And that is what triggers a turnaround. Every genuine thanksgiving evolves into praise. It's a good thing to give thanks and to sing his praises is the most high God. Thanksgiving as genuine will always evolve into praise. And praise will provoke divine presence. A divine presence will always make the difference. Will always make the difference. Until God came down, Israel didn't come out of captivity. You want God to come, you want to come out of captivity? Then bring God down. By genuine thanksgiving, which usually evolves into praise, and that brings God's, God, God's presence down, and that brings you and I out of captivity. You'll never be held captive again. Let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and then he graduates into praise and with praise into his courts. Let's be thankful unto him and bless his na holy name. We can't secure his presence without thanksgiving that graduates into praise because it's genuine from the heart. Without God, you and I can do nothing. And without praise, we can't have God. You can pray and fast for 50 years. That won't make a difference. No matter how hard you pray, a dolphin will not attend faith tabernacle service. He can't survive it. He <laughs> cannot. No matter how, how you join your hands and your heart. Oh, dolphin, come. You must attend this service today. <laughs> oh, prayer warriors, I can't. I will stop being dolphin when, if I do. I can't breathe outside water. In the same vein, no matter how hard you pray, God will only come down to the midst of praise. Without a thankful, praiseful life, you can't secure God's presence. Just like you can't secure the presence of a fish in the finest auditorium in the world. Because he can't survive there. He can't survive there. I've seen many prayer warriors who are weary. But in his presence, you go from strength to strength. Many prayer warriors are worn out, sir. They are worn out. Oh, God! You must hear me today. The difference between God hearing you and God coming down to you is too wide. When God comes down, barriers clear out. Everything standing on the way of your inheritance must give way this time. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. Just singing his praise.
from a heart of gratitude. He says, is any merry, let him sing. So the songs we sing under distress is a noise in the ears of God. Is any merry, are you joyful? Amen. And you can't be thankful and not be joyful. The reason people are not joyful is because they are not thankful. They are not thankful. I thought I would build my house this year. <laughs> and some of the times they are living in their own house now. Is there another one they want to build? <laughs> now, I thought my business will expand this year of breaking limit by 10 times. But it only multiplied by 5. You see? And I prayed 21 days of prayer and fasting. <laughs> if you are not grateful, you cannot be joyful. If you are not joyful, you cannot be praiseful. If you are not praiseful, you will lack God's presence. You lack God's presence, you are equal to zero. Without me, you can do nothing. Is somebody grateful this morning? Yes. Has God done you well? Yes. Now, in case you don't know, the fact that you are seated here today is a proof that God has done you well. Yes. And you are not one year old. So throughout the year, God kept you. He never slept because of you. He never slept because of you. This is how he sat over your bed and watching over anything that may want to hit, hit you. Come and give the Lord praise. Engaging the turnaround power of thanksgiving. We saw that picture very clean from John 11, 39 to 44, at the grave of Lazarus, how Jesus brought him back to life. Amen. You believe God dwells in the midst of his, the priest of his people? In Psalm 114, verse 1 to 7, when Israel came out of Egypt, God was in the midst of them. Amen. The sea saw them, it fled. Barriers will soon start clearing the way for you. Yeah. What's happening? He said, tremble thou at, at the presence of God. Verse 7. God's presence causes your troubles to tremble. They clear the way for you the same way they clear for the Almighty God. Because your praise has brought God down to your situation. All the barriers resisting your access to your promised land must clear off this time. This is why Thanksgiving is vital to anyone that desires to experience turnaround in his life. Thanksgiving, you can't do without it. Lift up your heads, ye gates, be lifted up your everlasting door, that the King of Glory may enter in. Who is the King of Glory? The Lord. Strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of Glory shall come in. Whatever clears the way for the King of Glory, clears the way for the one that carries his presence. So you carry his presence, but he has cleared the way for you as if they did not exist. As they began to sing, the Bible said, the foundation of the prison was shaken. Every man's barn was loosed and all the doors were opened. They are going to kill us tomorrow, but they are still alive today, so let's praise them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. All we have to say is thank you, Lord. They sang God into the prison. As God stepped in, the earth trembled. He said, the Lord in it, let the earth tremble. As they stepped in, the earth trembled. And God turned to the prison. A great light was shone in there. Every man's band was loosed. At 16 and verse 25 to 30. All the gates were open. All the doors were open. As God came down through their praise, 
the unusual took place. You are going to have a lot of experiences with the unusual in this coming year. Yeah. Just get addicted to this divine instruction. For everything, give thanks. It's not an achievement, it's an engracement. Every good thing in your life, every perfect thing in your life is by the grace of God. Paul said, I'm what I am by the grace of God. So you give him thanks for everything people marvel at in your life. Give him thanks for it. Don't pose as if you achieved it. It's simply an engracement from heaven. And in everything, give thanks. And then things keep turning in your favor. Among other things, Thanksgiving releases fresh oil upon the believer that triggers supernatural victory over the battles of life. Remember, it's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord, Psalm 92 and verse 1, and to sing praise unto his name, is the Most High God. Then your head shall be exalted like the horn of a unicorn, you shall be anointed with fresh oil. Thanksgivers don't run oil dry. Thanksgiver enjoy, Thanksgivers enjoy fresh oil. And then your eyes shall see your desire upon your enemies. Supernatural victory. And your ears shall hear your desire upon the wicked one that is up against you. So, <laughs> Thanksgiving and titles the believer to fresh oil and fresh oil and titles him to supernatural victory over the battles of life so come out of that situation and start celebrating your God in truth and in deed the anointing required for your victory will come and then your victory will become a walkover well, the good news is you are about entering your season of no more struggles. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. You are about entering your season of no more struggles. Yeah. In Jonah chapter 2 and verse 9 and 10, Jonah still had his breath in the belly of the fish. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. And the Lord spake to the fish. And he vomited out Jonah upon the dry ground. The voice of thanksgiving moved God in heaven to speak to the fish. Maybe you are in the belly of some fish. That fish must let you go and you are coming out today yeah. as your son of thanksgiving go up to heaven goes up to heaven your victory will be released on the earth yeah. somebody believe that let me hear your loudest amen yeah. in second chronicles chapter 20 and verse 21 and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercies endure it forever. They are just at the verge of being consumed. They say, Help me praise the Lord. His mercies endure forever. And as they began to celebrate God's faithfulness, we they were yet to see God set ambushment against their enemies and they were all smitten. And the Bible says in verse 24, and none of them escaped. Not one of them escaped. As the voice of thanksgiving ascended to heaven, God came down to give them the victory they don't have to fight for. He took over their battle. Thanksgiving is a mystery that guarantees sweatless triumph over the battles of life. 
your struggles are over. Amen. I said, your struggles are over. Amen. Now, let me tell you this, and I'm saying this before the Lord. This commission does not struggle over anything. Over anything. Why? He taught, he taught us how to hand over our battles to him. And through the mystery of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in the morning, thanksgiving in the afternoon, thanksgiving in the night. Your days of struggles are finally over. Yeah. There used to be a writer many years ago. And when he concludes anything he writes, the struggle continues. The struggle continues. The struggle continues. There are many lives that struggle just continue in their life. They just continue. But you belong to the household of God. Where what continues is victory, triumph, prosperity, expansion, enlightenment. That shall be the only things that continue in your life from now. By letting God fight your fight, as you give him thanks and praise at all times. Thanksgiving empowers covenant people to flourish even in hard times. Hear what he says. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise to his name, O Most High, to speak of his loving kindness in the morning and his faithfulness every night. And then, Verse 12, those that be planted, I mean, and the righteous that is committed to that shall flourish like the palm tree that knows no dry season. And like the cedar in Lebanon, the tallest among trees. As you give thanks, you keep flourishing. His presence causes to flourish even in hard times. You keep flourishing, you keep flourishing, you keep scaling new heights, new heights, new heights as you keep lifting Jesus up. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. In Isaiah chapter 51 and verse 1 to 3. Hearken unto me, ye that follow after righteousness, ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock whence ye are hewn, unto the rock of the pit whence ye are digged. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, thy mother. For I called them alone and blessed them and increased them. For the Lord shall comfort Zion, the church. He will comfort all our waste places. He will make our wilderness like Eden and our desert like the kind of the Lord. Now, joy and gladness shall be heard in her. Thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. So, thanksgiving turns our wilderness to Eden and our desert to the garden of the Lord. Thanksgivers don't know dry season. Dry season cannot survive with God's presence. Wherever God dwells, dry season cannot be there. Amen. It's always fullness. Full, of his fullness have we all received. Of his fullness, there is no dry season with God. Of his fullness, we have all received grace for grace, grace for grace, grace for grace, grace for grace. So, thanksgiving will turn anybody's wilderness to Eden and anyone's desert to the end of the Lord. With the voice of thanksgiving on and on in your life. You'll never see dry seasons again. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Something is breaking forth in someone's life today. Yeah. Because by the word you are hearing, an end has come to every form of complaining and moaning in your life. Yeah. But we must be aware of the cost of not giving thanks. Maybe that will help you to get addicted to thanksgiving. How costly is a life that is void of thanksgiving? 
Now, lack of thanksgiving can turn anyone's glory to shame. Your life will not suffer a setback. Yeah. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 1. This commandment is to you, O ye priests, and we have been reviewed as kings and priests to reign on the earth. If you will not hear and lay to heart, to give glory to my name, says the Lord, for the things I'm doing in your life, I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because you did not lay it to heart. So not giving God the glory due to him can turn our glory to shame. I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn assembly, and one will take you away with it. Say with me, God forbid. So for everything that people applaud in your life, unto the Lord be the glory, great things he has done. Unto the Lord be the glory. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of my prayer. No man on earth should be to himself all the glory. So for every good thing, every perfect thing that we experience in life, the glory must go back to God consciously, deliberately, intensely, and intentionally. We must return the glory back to him. Amen. Amen. Paul the apostle said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, do I labor more than them all? Yet not I owe, but the grace of God that was with me. When you see grace behind every glory you see, you never suffer shame. Amen. Now, from this moment, no one's life will suffer a setback again. Yeah. Our costly is not giving thanks. A thankless life. Lack of thanksgiving can stop our way forward. Lack of thanksgiving can stop our way forward. The path of the just as a shining light is ordained to shine more and more and more. But where thanksgiving is missing, the way forward is not accessible. That man saw that he was cleansed. He wasn't whole. The fingers were still like this. He returned with a loud voice, glorify God. And then he went forward. He was made whole. All the others were only cleansed. The one that returned to glorify God was the one that went forward. You are going forward from now. So where thanksgiving stops is where forward movement stops. Where our thanksgiving stops is where our forward movement stops. May you never stop your way forward again. May you never stop your way forward again. We give thanks to God with tears of joy for planting 5,000 churches by himself in, 19, I mean, 2019. <laughs> he said, you have not seen anything yet. I will surprise you. You plant 10,000. And he did. Your way forward is ever open with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving that is genuine, that is rooted in the heart, that is not just from the top of the tip of. He said, "These people moving at me with their mouth and with their tongue, do they praise me? But their heart is far from me." Isaiah twenty nine and verse thirteen. Their heart is far from me. Oh God, I thank you. That's what Papa said. I, I thank you. But you should know what I mean, God. I, 
I thank you. Nobody can thank you more than me in this church. I thank you. <laughs> Thanksgiving emanating from the heart. Because God is looking at the heart, not at your mouth. If it's not come from the heart, it has no access to God. You can't gain access to God with thanksgiving us from the lips. May no one here stop his or our way forward anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. There have been so many ups and downs and ups and downs experience among God's people. They, they have not found out why. The reason to go for medical checkup is to check what things are missing and how to replace them. They haven't checked it. Why has this ministry been going up and up and up and up? To be 40 next, uh, next May, I mean, we're going up and up and up and up. How? The mystery of Thanksgiving. From the heart. From the heart. So, there is no one that I raised from the dead. No. He raised them. I was his microphone. This microphone can't raise anybody. Can't lead anybody to salvation. That's how ordinary we are in the hand of God. And that's what keeps him on duty. Acknowledging the things you see as from him. Consciously, deliberately, intentionally. You won't lack his goodness anymore in your life. Somebody was in church. I didn't know he was dead. I mean, the child was dead. And I said, is there no Bar Mengilia? And the Bar went. I didn't go there. I didn't know anybody was there. The Bar Mengilia went there to the third floor and got him out of the dead. And I said, I thank God I can raise the dead. No, I didn't raise any dead. I wasn't aware when the dead was dead and how he was raised. Praise God. Somebody's story is changing from here. If that is your story, let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Every good thing you will ever see has come from the good God, yeah. your heavenly Father, and it must be acknowledged for it. In James chapter 1, verse 17, every good and perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of light, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Your story is changing. Number three, lack of thanksgiving can lead believers into captivity. Liberty can be turned to captivity for lack of thanksgiving. James or Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 15 to 17, we are very accustomed to that. Hear ye and give ear. Be not proud, for the Lord has spoken. Give glory to the Lord your God who before he causes darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains and while ye look for light, he turns it to the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. But if you will not hear it, my soul shall weep in secret places for your pride and my eyes shall weep sore and run, with, run down with tears because the Lord's captive the Lord's flock is carried away captive. Your liberty will not be turned to captivity. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. So lack of thanksgiving can bring believers into captivity again. And that's simple to understand. When God turns his back, the devil comes in to pick you up. Well, if God be for you, who can be against you? Nobody can sustain divine presence without a heart of thanksgiving and gratitude. In this presence, there must be fullness of joy. And if you are not grateful, you cannot be joyful. You can't be complaining and be rejoicing at the same time. <laughs> you can't be complaining and be rejoicing at the same time. You never lack his presence again. Yeah. When God leaves a man, the devil comes in to pick him up. No one here shall be picked up by the devil. Yeah. 
you never miss his presence again in your life. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Let me hear your loudest, amen. Well, lack of thanksgiving destroys just as pride does. Psalm 28 and verse 5, the book of Psalms 28 and verse 5. It said, because they regard not the works of the Lord. What is this? Nor the operation of his hand, he shall destroy them and not build them up. Some can't see God's hand on their life. They just see themselves and say, well, you know, I know where my mates are. You don't know. You don't know where they are. Some have gone to the grave longest time. Some are in the asylum now. You don't know where they are. I know what houses my mates are living in. You don't know. If you know, you will be dancing forever. That what have you done that has made God decorate you like this? Amen. Uh, to get a house to rent, you should thank God. If you are mad, would they rent you a house? Can you imagine a madman walk on to uh, an estate person and say, I want a flat. The man will run. He will run away. Oh, that you have a house to rent, you better be celebrating and be jumping. Be jumping. Be jumping. You, you, are not, you are not under the bridge. Be jumping. You are living in your own house, only two bedroom. Ah. Amen. You don't regard his works. He destroys. He doesn't spare. You mean with all I'm doing? Hear what he's saying? Then everything stops. Then everything stops. You thank God for one room, it will soon become two. You thank God for two, it will soon become three. And as your family and it become four. And you are growing. In number, your clan is growing. It becomes five. <laughs> Praise God. You don't thank God for one, you never see two. No. And the one you saw, you lose it. Never again. Amen. Never again. Amen. So we are here this morning to just throw loose before the Lord. Shemina re oluwa. Shemina re oluwa. Mo wadupe ore atodumodun. Mo wadupe ore atosumosu. Mo wadupe ore Iba gogo semina re. You made me, and we are in three pieces. I better like this. <laughs> Amen. Who does monkey banana? Grace. Come on, say grace. grace. Say with me, grace. grace. Say it loud, grace. grace. The loudest you can, grace. The grace of God on your life will never be turned to shame. In Proverbs 16 verse 18, it says, Pride goes before destruction and a haughty heart before a fall. Pride. When you don't see God behind the events of your life is pride. I mean, even those who are not as smart as me, I know where they are now. So you are smart. <laughs> well done, Mr. Smart. <laughs> well done, Mr. Smart. Amen. I have a number of my friends when we were growing up, they would say, I'm, I'm going to that church. I want to, I want to help them. <laughs> Most of them now need more help than those churches that they were going to help. No, no, no. no. There is no help in you except the one God puts there. You can't help nobody. I also had a number of close people to me. I bought this land. He's talking about the church. Yes, I bought 10 chairs last week. I bought one plot as extension. <laughs> I just, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
There is nothing in you. Without me, you can do nothing. Please acknowledge God. Acknowledge him. It's the only way to keep receiving help from him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Those good things in your life, they came from God. Those challenges, God as the one who didn't allow them to go beyond where they are. Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Celebrate him. Give him glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let me give you some time to outline at least seven thanksgiving points in your life. Seven. Take your pen and write it. If you have tablet or capsule, write it on it. <laughs> write it on it. And if I say submit it, you submit your capsule. <laughs> and so you can thank God on point. Not I thank you. I thank you. What are you thanking God for? Let everything that has bread praise the Lord. What are you thanking God for? He delivered your soul from destruction. I mean, he forgives all your sins. He heals all your diseases. Give him thanks. Many have died severally, but they will not be buried. He kept them alive. Give him thanks. Everybody here, just put some points down. Minimum seven. You know, seven points of thanksgiving for God's good hand on your life. Amen. Give him thanks and give him thanks. In a moment, we are going to be doing justice to the message by celebrating God with all our might. This is the doing of the Lord and it's marvelous in our sight. We are here today both as a church and as individuals to pay our debt of thanksgiving. We are there not ten cleansed. We are denying. We are denying. God is always waiting to be acknowledged for what he has done before he will do the next. You don't acknowledge him for what he has done, you are not qualified for the next. You are not qualified for the next. You are not qualified for the next. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, my God. I thank you, my God. I'm sure you know health is wealth. When anyone's health is challenged, everything comes to a standstill. Everything comes to a standstill. All attention focus on how to recover the health. But he kept you sound, hale and hearty all this time. Global lockdown, it didn't allow you to be locked down. He kept you afloat. He kept you flying. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. That's what the word means by saying, sing ye praises with understanding. Some of this understanding has been opened this morning. Uh, you never become a victim again. Yeah. At no time will thanksgiving cease from your lips. Yeah. It shall keep flowing and flowing from your heart. Yeah. And your life shall keep going forward. Yeah. You will not know a setback in your life. Yeah. The way forward will never be blocked against you anymore. Yeah. Every open door will remain open. Every closed door will be open in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not be destroyed. You will keep regarding the works of God and the operation of his hand. No one here shall be a victim of pride. We are where we are. You are where you are. I'm where I am by the grace of God. And may that sound keeps coming from your heart forever. Thank you, Jesus. Just before we do what we need to do this morning, you are here in this service, this end of year special Thanksgiving service, and you want to rededicate your life to Jesus because one of the problems we have today is that people have been off for long and they assume they are on, even though the catalysts of being on are no longer there. 
They just assume and they keep struggling and struggling. Now, when you cut off a branch from a tree, it looks gray, but only for a while. After a while, it turns brown, and then the wind carries it, and most of the time into fire, or disappear into the thin air. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. You can't afford to go through this off and on in the year ahead. So on this great day of Thanksgiving, you want God to establish your root in the faith and keep you on the spiritual path for this awesome prophetic year. It's our 40th year. It's your year of entering your promised land. You, 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 can't, you can't afford to be in the middle of the road. Amen. That's how the Holy Ghost is leading me this morning. You want your foundation in Christ to be established. You want your spiritual life to take a new turn. You want to return in full force to your God. I'm going to be praying with you this morning. Amen. That's apart from those who have never met Jesus before and you want to meet him. I'll pray with you. Amen. Don't assume you are back when you are off. Don't. If the prodigal son ever assumed, he will be dead without anybody knowing where his graveyard was. Somebody is returning wholeheartedly this morning. I'm glad to let you know no one can handle your life better than Jesus. <laughs> I've come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. No one can handle my life better than Jesus. Thank you, Father. Very quickly, please, you would like me to pray with you for those who want to rededicate their life to Christ. Please stand first. You want to dedicate your life to Christ? Stand first. And God bless you. you want to dedicate your life to Christ? Please stand. I'm tired of off and on because you are neither cold nor hot. I will spew you out of my mouth. You want to have your feet established upon the solid rock? God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Praise the Lord. Everybody standing for this call, bow your head. Lift up your two hands to heaven and call for heaven's help. For your wholesome return to your father. Wholesome restoration of your spiritual life. Lift up your two hands and call for his help. Call for his help by yourself. Call for his help by yourself. I'm tired of being in the middle of the road. A double-minded person is still in all his ways. Let him not think he shall receive anything from God. Call for his help. My father, receive me back. And grace me to stay on the rest of my life. I don't want to miss the wonders of the 40th year. I want to make heaven at the end of my journey. So help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Lift up, your two, lift up your two hands, all of you that are standing. In the precious name of Jesus, I command every rope tying you to the other side to be fully destroyed. Amen. I pray that your return today will lead to restoration of all that you may have lost. Amen. And I pray for the Spirit of God to take over in your life right now. Amen. You never stray away from your Father anymore. Amen. Jesus, your Savior, will never leave you anymore. Amen. And I pray that today will mark a new dawn in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say with me, Lord Jesus, thank you for accepting me as I return today, and I thank you for the restoration of all things I may have lost hitherto. Thank you, Jesus, for receiving me into your kingdom. By your help, I'll never walk away again. I'll never walk away again. I'll never walk away from you again. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 
please fill out those slips and we'd like to be part of your joy and be helpers of your faith. Fill out those slips and pass them on to the kingdom friends around you. Give the Lord a big hand for these precious people. Please, church officials, make sure you take those notes. Finally, I'd like to pray for those who want to turn their life over to Christ for the first time. Jesus, save my soul. I want to explain the reality of new birth in my life. If anyone has Christ, has life. You don't have Christ, you don't have life. Wherever you are, you like me to pray with you to be born again. Please stand. Stand to your feet. And God bless us to do. Stand to your feet. You want to surrender your life to Christ today, stand to your feet. You want to be born again today, stand to your feet wherever you are. And I'll be praying for you. God bless you. God bless you. And God bless you. Somebody else is standing up wherever you are, stand to your feet. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me my sins. Make me a new creature. Give me eternal life. Amen. For everybody standing for this call, bow your heads, lift up your right hand, and pray this prayer of faith from the depth of your heart. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Say it loud. Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. I will serve you all the days of my life by your help. Amen. Keep your hands up. In the name of Jesus, be blessed of the Lord today. And I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered against all satanic assaults. Grace to stand fast for Jesus all the days of your life. Receive it now in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Congratulations. Congratulations. Please complete those slips and pass them on to the church officials around with you. Please, church officials, make sure you take note of that. It's time to give God thanks. And first, we give him thanks for his church for keeping us strong and healthy over the years. Particularly in this year of global lockdown, God has shown us a lot of mercy. He has shown us a lot of favor. He has kept us stronger by the day. Stand to your feet. Whatever good thing you have seen in this church, in this commission, since the year began, lift up your two hands and give God thanks for it. Massive salvation of souls, impactful outreaches, great growth and replication of the cell system, healing, deliverance, and special miracles. Help me lift up your two hands, everybody, and give God thanks for it. Not unto us, O oh God, not unto us, but unto you we give glory. 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 Give him thanks for this great commission. It's manifest presence in our midst over the years. Particularly in this year of global lockdown. Give him glory and praise. Magnify and celebrate him. Thank you, Jesus. Give him thanks for the world. 
for diverse confirmation of his word in our midst. Give him thanks for light from heaven. Magnify him and celebrate him. We give you glory and praise. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now, over to you and your items of thanksgiving. Go before the Lord, everyone, and begin to give him thanks on the points you have noted and the points that the Holy Ghost will ginger you to see. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, celebrate him. Give him thanks and glory and praise and honor. There is no one like him. He has kept you and I alive. He has preserved our soul from destruction. He satisfied our mouth with good things. Our days are renewed like the eagles. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. He has crowned us with his goodness and tender mercy. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. He has not given us to the will of our enemies. Give him thanks. Give him thanks. Give him thanks for your life. Give him thanks for your spiritual life. Give him thanks for your family. Give him thanks. Everybody is saying, thank you, Jesus. Everywhere you are, thank you, Jesus. Everyone is saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank him for great deliverances. Thank him for great deliverances. Thank him for awesome provisions. 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 Thank him for all some 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 provisions. Give him glory and praise. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Now, look up here. There are certain things you look forward to, but couldn't find them physically. I want to thank God for them. Amen. Amen. Then they will arrive speedily. Amen. There are certain things you look forward to, but you haven't laid hold on them. As you give thanks, it delivers them. Amen. I thought I'd be married this year. Thank God. Because your marriage is settled in heaven. Amen. And then with speed, you get settled as you step into the new year. I thought I would have gotten a new job by now. Thank God for the job you are on because it's leading the way to the next ones. I thought by now I would have completed my house. Thank God that you started at all. Then you completed. Can I hear your amen? Whatever thing would have been a source of, well, give God thanks for it. Go ahead and give God thanks. Give God thanks for it. 
Give God thanks for it. Everybody give him thanks. Whatever may not have come as big as you think they will come, give him thanks. Then you come bigger than you imagine. They will come to you bigger than you imagine. They will come to you bigger than you imagine. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Jesus, let our thanksgiving as a church and as individuals be a smelling, sweet smelling savour in your presence. And let the blessing of thanksgiving start speaking in our lives right now. Yeah. As we celebrate you this morning, then there will be healings, deliverances, and breakthroughs. Yeah. Thank you for this awesome year. You have been awesome to us, both as a church and as an individual, and we give you thanks for it. In Jesus' precious name. In Jesus' precious name. We are going to get into this act of intense thanksgiving and praise dance. Hallelujah. And then I'll be welcoming the choir to come and display before the Lord. Amen. Where each one of us is doing the greatest we can do before the Lord. Your thanksgiving must get across to heaven today. And it will show between now and the next season. Between now and the next end of the year, Thanksgiving, you are a wonder to behold. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Higher, higher. Higher, 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 higher. Lift Jesus higher. Lift him and everybody. Hey. Lift him high, lift Jesus high in our behalf. Service today, thank him. He made you to see the one for last year, and you are seeing the one again for today. It is the doing of the Lord, and it's marvelous in our eyes. It's of the Lord's message that we are not consumed. His compassions fail not; they are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Yeah. Everything in the kingdom produces to the level of our understanding of it. Whosoever receives the word and understands it, it will bring forth fruits. Some 64, some 104, some 34. Is how much spiritual understanding we have of any truth of scriptures is what determines the benefits we draw from them. Thanksgiving is a vital key to fulfilling our glorious destiny in Christ. And I pray that today each one will return with the baptism of the spirit of thanksgiving. Yeah. Murmurings and complainings will be far from your dwelling place. The days of your struggles are over today. 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 And the days of your struggles are over today. Yeah. 
Is that possible? Oh yeah. This ministry has never had to struggle for anything in nearly 40 years. And so I know as a part of this family, your days of struggling for survival, they are finally over. There is no old-fashioned truth. There is no new generation truth. The truth of God's word lives and abides forever. They produce at the same rate, same level in all generations. Therefore, today, you will return for as many as so desire with the spirit of thanksgiving at work in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. And so shall it be. Can I have somebody say with me, my days of struggles are over. I shall never have to struggle for survival anymore. From henceforth, God will be taking over my battle. And I'll be watching the film of my victory. On the screen. Like a dream of the night. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Father, let our thanksgiving today be acceptable to you. And let thanksgiving become the new addiction of your people today. In Jesus' precious name. It's my year of breaking limits. Give the Lord the biggest clap offering and take your seat, please. Amen. Congratulations for saying the last Sunday of the year 2020. By the grace of God, if Jesus tarries, you shall be alive and well the last Sunday of 2021. Your family members shall be alive and well the last Sunday of 2021. Your children, your grandchildren will be alive and well the last Sunday of 2021. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Can you help me congr congratulate your neighbor to your right and to your left? Congratulations for saying the last Sunday of the year 2020 because we are sure to see the year the last Sunday of the year 2021. Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Father. Engaging the turn around power of thanksgiving is our subject this morning. Thanksgiving is embedded with Torn around virtues that no prayer and fasting can be a substitute. Give ye them to eat was Jesus' command to Philip. Maybe he was in charge of purchasing. <laughs> he said, Where are we going to get bread to buy for all this? So the struggle was on in the mind of Philip. But this is said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. John chapter 6, verse 6. He knew what he would do. To overturn the struggles to testimony, he knew what to do. There's a lad here, they said, I had 
five loaves and two fishes. But what is that among so many? What are these among so many? <laughs> he said, you don't know what. Let them bring it. Jesus lifted up his hands and gave thanks. And the supernatural took place. A massive turnaround was made manifest. 5,000 men and women, I mean, minus women and children, that would mean that we have about 5,000, about 10,000 people, fed from five loaves and two fishes by the mystery of thanksgiving. Jesus knew what to do, and we saw what he did. He simply gave thanks. He simply gave thanks. He simply gave thanks. That tight corner will be loosed as you genuinely give thanks. That insufficiency will become surplus as you heartily offer thanks to God. Massive turnaround virtue is embedded in the mystery of thanksgiving. Massive turnaround virtues. That leper returned, cleansed, but the hands were still clipped, contoured still on his face. With a loud voice, with clipped hands, but he couldn't feel the hitches again under the skin. Ha, thank you, God. Were well, there not ten cleansed? Where well, were well, the nine? Now, their faith has changed your story again. And it was made whole. The fingers came straight. The face came rounded. At the instance of thanksgiving. He completes his work in our lives. Until you thank him for his finger, you cannot see his hand. Until you thank him for his hand, you cannot see his outstretched arm. The more you thank him, the more of his diversions you experience. And again, may thanksgiving become your new addiction today. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest, amen. Yeah. The third example of the turnaround virtue and being in the mercy of thanksgiving was the case of Lazarus. Take away the stone, Jesus commanded. And Mary said, Ah, he's been dead now for four days. Now he's thinking, Take away the stone. And Jesus gave thanks, and the four the old dead came back to life. Jesus gave thanks. Life replaced death. Thanksgiving carries massive turnaround virtues within it. Therefore, today, as you give thanks for what he has done, you have committed him to deliver the balance. As you give him time for that stinking situation, you have committed him to turn it around for a testimony. Yeah. Thanksgiving is one of the vital mysteries of the kingdom that we need to get acquainted to in these last days, acquainted with in these last days, for a continuous turnaround experience in the name of Jesus Christ. We also know from scripture that every genuine thanksgiving usually results into praise. Which invokes divine presence because God inhabits the will of his people and that makes all the difference in our lives. When you are genuinely thankful, you'll be truly praiseful 
And when you are truly praiseful, you'll be supernaturally Godful. God comes to dominate your life. His presence envelopes you. So whatever clears the way for God, clears the way for you. Now, that will be your experience from today. Yeah. It's a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto him, the most high God. When you are thankful, you will be praiseful. And when you are praiseful, God will inhabit your praise. Psalm 22 verse 3. And when God inhabits your praise, barriers that clear the way for God clear the way for you. So, beginning from now, as you offer your intentional thanksgiving to God, and you receive the grace to keep doing so in life, no barrier will stop your asset to inheritance anymore. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. When Israel came out of Egypt, God was their sanctuary or God was in the midst of them. And the sea saw them, it fled. Jordan was driven back. The mountains keep like rams and the hills like young lambs. What ailed the O.C. that thou fledest? I know Jordan that was driven back. He said, tremble thou art at the presence of God. When God dominates a life, <laughs> all that troubles others tremble at their presence. Glory to God. He said God was their sanctuary and Israel was his dominion. Dominion. God dominated their life, their midst. And so, everything that clears the way for God clears the way for them. Now, in the name of Jesus, every barrier on your way to your promised land will be clearing off like a dream of the night. As you stay addicted to thanksgiving, praise will become your new way of life and God's presence will dominate your life. And so, everything that trembles at God's presence begins to tremble at your presence. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. And this is why Thanksgiving is vital to anyone that desires to experience turnarounds in life. It takes the God of turnaround. To make that happen. He said, lift up your heads. He gave Psalm 24 and verse 7 to 10. And be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors. That the, and the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? He said, the Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. O ye gates, even lift them up. Ye everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord of hosts is the king of glory. When you're on a convoy with a president of a nation, whatever clears the way for that president clears the way for you. Whatever salutes that president salutes you. So when you are on with God, everything that bows to God bows to you. I pray that no one will turn his back on God or our back on God anymore. God's presence is the master key to a world of unquestionable breakthroughs. You can't stop him as long as you cannot stop God. Therefore, nothing will be able to stop your way forward anymore in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Paul and Silas were locked up in the prison, Acts chapter 16, verse 25 to, to 30. And then they prayed, nothing was happening. And they sang praises. To the point that the mockers heard them. They sang praises aloud. The mockers heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. 
And immediately all the doors were open and every man's band was loose. They were to be slaughtered the following day. But in the midnight of their ordeal, they began to thank God for the breath in their nostrils. And God stepped in. How do I know? He said, the Lord in it let the earth tremble. The Lord in it let the earth tremble. As God stepped to the place, the foundation of the prison was shaken. All the doors were open and everyone's band was loosed. Whatever prison house may have held anybody down till now, the thanksgiving power of today will shake the foundation of that prison. Yeah. All the doors that shut you in shall be open. Yeah. All the bands on your feet, on your hands and your feet shall be loosed. Yeah. And you will sing a new song. Yeah. You are going to sing a new song. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thanksgiving, among others, releases fresh oil upon the believer, which triggers supernatural victory over the battles of life. Fresh oil, fresh oil, fresh oil. It's a good thing to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praise on his name is the most high God. Then your head, verse 10. It will exalt like the whole of a unicorn. And you shall be anointed with fresh oil. And your eyes will see your desire upon your enemies. And your eyes will hear your desire upon the wicked that is up against you. Fresh oil. Bringing you fresh victory day by day. Your head will never lack oil again. The more thankful we are, the fresher the oil we bear, the more thankful a believer, the fresher the oil on his life. The more thankful a believer, the fresher the oil on his life. From today, I decree that Thanksgiving becomes your new addiction. He said, let not your head lack ointment. Let your garments be always white and let thy head lack no ointment. Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 8. One way to keep your head with fresh oil is to remain thankful as your new lifestyle. He said, for everything give thanks. Ephesians 5 and verse 20. For every good thing you see give thanks. For every great experience you have, give thanks. For the breakthroughs you enjoy, give thanks for everything. Then he went on in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 18. In everything, they are not the same. For everything, give thanks. Then in everything, including those things that look contrary to what you expected, Give thanks so they can line up with God's agenda for your life. Can I hear your amen? amen? In everything. So there is no room for more money or complaining. For everything, give thanks. And in everything, give thanks. That means God has ordained thanksgiving to be our addiction in life. In everything. I once said by the Holy Ghost that if you have lost anything, God said, I'm the reason why you have not lost everything. You lost your business, thank God you didn't lose your life. You can have another business. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. So you can be restored. Your vision can be restored. If you have lost anything, I am the reason why you have not lost everything. So in everything, give thanks. And whatever has been lost will be restored. In everything, give thanks. In everything. Lazarus was thinking, Jesus was giving thanks. Amen. You are going to feed 10,000 people. You have only five loaves and two fishes. They should go home. Jesus gave thanks. And the bread multiplies super.